I'm just fitting these doors. Just got to plane off a little bit or remove a little. Decided to use my track saw. I've just had this one on the bench. And you see there's a gap there. But it's touching top and bottom. Same there. It's touching in the middle. But a gap. Top and bottom. And this one was straight. But. That one's parallel. It's this timber and this timber that are, that are both that are both bent. So it's the door is actually straight. Like I said, this one was touching all the way down as if it was straight, as if these two pieces were straight. When you get it on the table, touching there, touching top there, little gap, the amount that that one's bent in there. You see? Good straight edge. It's as straight as my truck is. It's a cupboard that's bent, which makes it awkward because that door's straight. I'm struggling a little bit with these, I'm trying to get them to fit with nothing fixed back to this. Needs fixing back to a wall, and then I can hang this properly. But I can't do that. See that slightly bent. I've got a fairly parallel gap there, but it's touching top and bottom. Same there. That's not bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix the hinges on and play with it then. At least I can get that something like straight. Take it from there. My dilemma now is I bought four hinges for each door. So that would be one, two, three, four. Uh, four or five. Uh, put a piece of softwood on there and create the reboot. I could use inset hinges, but then you end up with a gap down there. This has to have a stop on it this side, so might as well have a reboot on that side as well. And like I say, you get a gap. I prefer it when you can't see through it. Anyway, I've gone ahead, glued and pinned that on, and when it comes to it, I'll fix, I'll fix it back from behind the hinges uh, and as always made a little test piece up I set this screw so that it's sort of midway between you know furthest in furthest out these are about 15 mil fifteen and a half If I move that in anymore, see it already touches, touches there, just, that's about the gap that I want, but I always end up putting a round on this edge anyway, because these timbers are 20mm, I think these hinges are designed for sort of maximum, sort of 18mm. But I just wrap around on the edge of the door. And I'll get this one cut. And that is three point six mil off there. And that's with four. I think I'm going to stick with that. They're not hard, they're not heavy doors. They're not particularly wide doors either. I'm quite happy with that. Still need to do some sanding. So, 100 mil up, 100 mil down, and then I've divided it between each one.
Right, I made a measuring stick, marked bottom. And they used to call them a staff rod. But I've marked them, squared them across so that I can work on both sides of the door. And I can put a packer, the thickness that I want, that gap at the bottom. And I can stand that on there and mark off where my mounting plates are going to go on here. And I've set my square to that distance there. That's where the screws for this mounting plate went in. And when I set this up, just like I set that one for the distance in and out, I set this one for the distance in and out of there, somewhat like in the middle. I think it was that one. So I should have a bit of play either way. So now I can use that, that's my pencil line. That I marked off my stick there. So now I can run a pencil line down there for the screw holes for the mounting plates. Right, and I know from experience, trying to clip these on, four of them, it's quite a pain in the neck. So I put one on, that's fixed at the top there. And then these, holding the door with my foot, so that the hinges don't sag. See if I, if I release it a little. See that moves a little bit. If I hold it up, I can get a screw in there, screw in there, and so on. Right, so that's one on. Gap at the top's a little tight. I can drop the door down. Because there's a bit of a gap at the bottom there. I always knew it was going to be tight. If I was to push that in, just touching the middle there, nothing straight. But if I was to push that in, see it nearly goes in, I don't want to push it in. But I could take just a couple of mil off that edge and that one should fit. Maybe take a fraction off the bottom, off the top I mean. But I'll get it swinging, get it shutting first, then I can see what those gaps are like. And I'll work my way along. These hinges should pull that a bit straighter. So maybe it'll pull it in a little bit. And when it comes to fitting it on site, I can fix it back to the wall. And then I can even pack the shelves out inside to get that one right. And then that one will be what it is. It'll get fixed back to the wall, but it's going to get fixed back, you know, further back. So I'll work my way around. That one should be a lot easier. Now a lot of dicking around, try to get these straight. But all the gaps are somewhat like parallel. That one's a little bit tight there, that one on this door. But it can move over a fraction. So now I've got to cut the handles. I've just put a bit of tape on there. That's a metre from the floor to the bottom of the handle decided that a metre to the centre of the handle was just a bit low. So that bit of tape's just there to help me visualise it. And it's hard to tell, it's always hard to tell, but I think I think that's where it's going to go. It's 250mm long, a metre up. The gaps are parallel at the top, but what I'll do is measure down and then mark across. Make sure the tops are okay. Measure down, mark across, or up, measure up, one or the other. But I'll measure, I'll mark across so that two doors always match up. That one, when I cut these finger holes, I only want enough to get my fingers in, but I've got two here and I don't want it too wide but this one I've only got one so I'll probably make this a little bit deeper maybe
Might quite work quite well. Just trying to avoid breakout on this end. And I normally run off my fence, but this time I decided to make a jig. It's a bit hard to tell, but I think I'm just going to go for it. Right, these are the pencil lines on the door. And for some reason the 255 and I made this 250. So they don't quite line up, but I'm going to work off the top of the door on each one. Right, that worked out all right. A bit burning, a little bit of break out there, but I'll sand that round anyway. That's just a burn mark that I'll sand out. And I'll cove, cove that. I'll sand that. Alright, so second one from the top again. I put these little blocks sticking out like that so that I could flip this jig over. But it appears I don't need to, but it's good practice to do that anyway because it's quite annoying. You put them on and then you can't turn it over. A little bit wider than I'd normally do them. But they're done now, it's a bit late. But they pretty much marry up. A little bit of sanding. So I'll get these others done. And I don't think I'll need to make that one bigger. Be a bit of a squeeze, but you should be able to just be able to get your fingers in. And that one will be the same as that. I've got a bit of sanding to do. You see, putting that round on just helps them clear so they go past easily. Like I said, these hinges I think are meant for up to about 18mm. still out a little bit. I did have a clamp on it but I'll do the same. I'll put a little packer at the bottom there so it's standing off like that and then clamp the door see if I can twist it a bit. Now I've got a skirting to make and I'll do it like I did before where I glue it all together in the mitre and when it gets sprayed it's nice and neat on the corner. The same I've got corners to go on.
good. See if it stays that way. I just glued it together, a couple of pins in face. Just hold it together a little bit. They're going to go around the top. And I made two more that are going to be the bottom skirt. I'll trim them to length on site. This time I take it to bits. Carcasses are going to go up there. Get put in place, painted by the customers. The doors and everything that you can see here, I'm going to spray. But I'm taking these wardrobes to bits. And as I take each door off, I'm going to put little holes in the bottom. These hopefully won't get covered up by the paint. But that's five. So five, four, three, two, one. Now I need to sand the edges of these, but I'll sand them while they're still on the frame. So I'll only sand up to there. I don't sand all the way through, rounding that off too much. When I come to paint it, that edge will get a little bit sanded. So you'll, you'll still see these joints a little bit, but not as much as what I'm gonna sand these. Right, well those two pieces fit as I expected them to. I don't have to worry about the carpet so I'm just going to cut it back as much as I need. They're getting a new carpet in here. And we've moved the bed enough for me to get enough space. I'm going to need most of this just to get that unit together. Hardest bit's going to be standing it up and missing the light. Which is already looking a little dodgy so I don't know, I might take the lampshade off I'll stand these together I'll put some timbers on the floor so that I can feel underneath and give me something to get my fingers under and get it screwed together I have to buy a new scraper you want a nice stiff one doesn't bend easily. Ideally one with metal that goes all the way through so you can abuse it. It's a different make to what I normally get but that's all they had. I might trash this handle a bit because it's got an hole in it. But yeah, it's an important part of your kit. Right. Is that a level? That way. That's touching. That needs to come up. So I'm going to put a bracket in there, hold that down. I've left myself just a little bit of clearance here, just to, so that I'm not hard up against the wall, uh, up against the skirting. I'll level that, put a bracket either end, and I'll put a packer across this joint. Then I'll pack it up level at the front, but I'm not going to fix the front down, so that when I get the cupboard on and the doors and everything, I can pack it and lift it if I need to. I can also push it push this thing so that it's square to the base I could just sit the base on and check it but it's nice to have that little bit of play so it's not bad it still wants to come up maybe just a just a fraction but I've got 18 mil in there already to nothing but I'll put a little bracket on there I might put a little packer in my bags here, I use bags now rather than boxes because boxes get trashed. Bags are easier to stow in the van. But in here I've got assortment of plastic packers. In here I've got ply packers from hardboard right up to 18 mil, 9 mil, half inch. Alright, so that's pretty level there. I say I've left the packers loose. I haven't fixed them down. And I've left them sticking out so that at a later date I can get a prop under there. This end, this timber's a little twisted, but if I push it down like that, it's sort of level. It's near enough for me. But it's up quite a long way, is that? But that's close enough. When I get the unit made and sat on top, it'll push all that down. And then when I come to putting the doors and everything on, I can 
I can lift it, move it around, adjust the packers, put another packer in the middle there. And that's one end screwed on. It's one thing I like about these buttons, it makes it easier to slide stuff. So I need to pull it away from the wall there now so I can get down there. And I forgot to, I normally drill through this side, you know, drill through between the, between the biscuits and then you know where your screw holes are. But I forgot on this one, so I'm going to drill through on this where these biscuits are. Fortunately I've got them, but I can drill through and I can pull that gap up when it comes through. I just need to drill just to the side a little bit. So I'll get that finished, pull it over, do the other end. See there's the holes that I drilled from the other side. Now just come over a little bit and get some screws in. You see when I put this together I put the clean cut side. See that's a bit rough that one. Put the clean cut side to the side that you're going to see. Same on all these. So you see slightly, slightly rough on the outside there. Probably me now didn't need a new blade in my saw, but that's good practice to do anyway. Right, I'm going to put the backs on. I've just measured corner to corner there, that's 2735. I did also measure this one, if I can get me tape on it. Oh, there we go. And this one is 2745, 2746. That's 35, this is 45. So I want to find the middle ground, which is 40. So that's 40 across there. for this shit. That's far over there, not near enough. So I can get the backs on now. And when I put the backs on, I normally fix the short leg. It's going to be one half of the back of this and then there's a long one here. It's behind there somewhere. No, it's down there. So I'll put the backs on. Normally fix the short leg. I can pull this one to the edge of the board. And those two edges that I fit first, I keep them flush to the edge. So I always cut the backs just, just a fraction short. You don't really want it hanging over, especially when you stand it up and you're sliding them around. You won't, you don't want them projecting down and getting caught and dragging on stuff. And when you sit it on there, you don't want it, you don't want it sitting on the back. You want it sitting on the base. Glue. 20 mil staples, narrow crown staples, int a staple gun. So we've got factory cut corner. I'll start here, flush, put a couple of staples in there, get this flush. Then I can pull that edge, pull that side to the edge of the board, get that flush. Then this one's just a fraction short. So I'll pull that board so it's just a fraction short and the top will be the same, I'll just make sure it's the same distance off or flush, whatever it is. I remember what I had to do in the shop to pull this out. I'll do that, get a staple in it. Alright, for this next one, I've just put a staple in each corner. You can see it runs out a little bit, it's flush there. It's out a little bit there. And all I can do here is try and get this straight through. You see if I sit my level on there, it does need to come in a little bit. There's a little gap down there. So if I go up there, give it a kick, push that down, 
that should that should move over a bit. So now that's flush straight. I'll staple this side to the board, keeping that distance off the board all the time. Right, I need to lift this, then I can put that other divider in and staple that back when it's stood up. I've taken it off the wood because I've got limited clearance. As I stand this, that'll get in the way. I ain't got my tripod, so I don't know whether I can prop this up somewhere to show you. Show you me struggling and swearing. Piece of piss. Piece of piss that. Right, I've just got to push it around, get it on there. Uh, I had doubts for the moment. That'll fill. Room's getting decorated anyway. I'm in here, or I will be. Just a bit tight on this. I need to cut that back. Didn't think about that. But these, I'll measure that. Check that I'm alright there. So this is no different to scribing. Measure the distance it needs to go back. Measure from the piece that you've put it up to. Make a pencil line. So that's my pencil line there. I'll cut that off there. Right, confession time, big cock up. I should have put this in, then I could have stapled it to the back and stood the whole thing in. But what I've done is, you can't see at the back there, I put a shed load of glue. I'm going to screw this in, and then where the screws go, where the shelves go, I'm going to put a couple of screws into the back to pull it against it. Oops. Should be okay. Once glue goes off, that'll be fine. It's actually better than this one, which I stapled in, and that one. Okay. See, all them screws are hidden by the shelves now. I get that one done now. Sockets are getting covered up, but he's an electrician. He says he's going to deal with it after. Probably lift a board, find the wires underneath. So that's not my problem. Uh, I've already trashed my scraper. I knew that hole in the end was going to be a weak point. The other ones that I get a bit more expensive than this one. They don't have that hole. I just end up creasing the end. 
and the wood slowly deteriorates but I'll just hit it again we'll see piece of cheap shit right that'll do for now paint's coming Monday so I'll spray next week hopefully I'll have this done by the end of next week <laughs>